supplements, restful sleep, which uh, has a lot of melatonin in, natural. Um, uh, and uh, on top of that, I take an additional four melatonin every night before I go to bed. Um, and sometimes when I'm a few hours later when I wake up, I, I'll lay there and I'll take a couple more even. I don't think you can OD on them, can you? Yeah, no, not necessarily. Take, as long as you're sleeping, George. Right. Uh, I believe they're water, they're water soluble, so if you have too much, you'll get rid of them. So uh, basically, um, my, spec, uh, my spec scans and, and everything, and actually my microcognitive memory tests, uh, I don't know, what was, do you know what my last score was? when I was down there just two weeks ago. I haven't your seen that yet. Score? Yeah. Um, actually, your memory score had improved. I want to say, was it in this? It was 64 the oh, last time. 60. Uh, so it was, uh, when I started, I, I believe I, I, I had scored a, a 56 before I started all my treatments. Um, I went back down. One of the things they got me on was the hyperbaric oxygen treatments and then the omega-3s. Um, and uh, what's funny is I had always taken omegas years ago. Uh, one, they'll reduce cholesterol. And I was a very thin kid growing up, and I always had to really, really work to keep my weight up. And I was 275 when I was playing, and, but I would eat a dozen, dozen half eggs a day. And when I got done, I thought, good God, my arteries are probably going to explode. So. Um, one of, the, one of the lucky things for me, I think, is despite what I've been through over the years, is, is the first year I got out, I, I dumped about 45 pounds, 50 pounds, and I've kept my weight about there. Um, with the diet, this is before I really knew a lot of the stuff, but I was lucky, I changed my diet totally. Um, I went from eating all the eggs and, and raw red meat, uh, fish and chicken, uh, lots of vegetables, not even knowing they're full of antioxidants and things. Um, to this day, I still, I still, uh, and I eat like a pig, but I, but what I eat, I think, is a little better for me. Um, I touched on the, the sleep apnea test. That's the big thing I need to work on. Um, another issue, and this is one I think we can all associate to. My first brain surgery was September of '81. Between then and four months after we won the Super Bowl, January of '82, rested three times. I have absolutely no memory how I got there. Just throwing chairs through windows, punching people out, um, totally out of character. Well, that, that May, May of 82, my shunt failed. I had two more brain surgeries 10 hours apart with a new surgeon, and we told him about my issues with the alcohol. And they had me do a, uh, they did a, an EEG on me, which measures uh, brain waves. But they had me drink two, two beers prior to that. And just from two beers, and I was totally fine functioning, I had um, abnormal brain waves. They were spiking all over. So basically, I have um, brain seizures from alcohol. And um, I quit drinking in 82. They said, you can't drink anymore. So I think we can all appreciate the fact that we know many, many people that are great guys until you put a couple of drinks in them, and they're totally different people. That causes a hell of a lot of problems with our marriages, business relationships, you name it. So if I could give you guys any, that probably the first thing I would tell you is either quit drinking or cut back. And then the diet too. I think a lot of the things that I was doing 20, 30 years ago have helped me maintain despite what I've been through. Um, and um, uh, another little, little, you know, I, I, those of you that have seen me this weekend, I, I live out of these. You know, I have 20, 30 years of these. I'll have 20 pages a day. I write down the time when someone's, I'm speaking to someone, what we're talking about. And I've learned over the years, every few days, I'll read back the prior week or two. So that means I'll have read what I did four days ago. Maybe I'll end up reading about it three times. Now, I may not remember meeting with the governor a week and a half ago, but I know I did because I've read it four times now. And just the repetitive, it's just like in practice, you know, we practice the same plays over and over and over, the same moves over and over. So you didn't have to think about them. And, and that's, I've kind of just conditioned myself into a number of different coping mechanisms. Um, uh, the green tea thing, another one that, that I got on two years ago, um, 
for the antioxidants, um, not knowing how well that, that they were going to start pushing that. So I kind of lucked out. A lot of the things I started on several years ago are now really coming out more and more in the public. So antioxidants, when we're playing, especially, and I'm going to just kind of focus on the brain, but our entire bodies, we're beating the hell out of it. Okay, with the brain, every time you're hitting, your brain's sloshing around, you're stretching those neurons. Well, they get inflamed, just like your muscles get inflamed when, when you're sore after playing. Well, those inflamed cells, if you don't do something to them, they will start dying sooner th than a normal human. And I always talk about there's football players and there's normal human beings. So normal human beings, their brains don't slosh around, and most of those will start showing signs of dementia in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, two years ago, when I started all these treatments, I was on four different dementia medicines at once, on top of grand mal seizure meds, just to try to keep functioning in, in, my, in my position. I'm a, I'm a wildlife biologist. Since I've started all these treatments, the hyperbaric oxygen, and I take, I take huge doses of omega-3s. I take 18 grams a day. They started me on 12, which is, I take 18 of the 1,000 milligram capsules. So I go through gallons of this stuff every, you know, every year. But between the omegas and the hyperbarics, um, again, as, as I mentioned, uh, my memory test, I've had four, actually five of them now, and I have improved every single time I've gone down there. Now I'm going on 54 years old. We should be showing declines on my memory that's just normal. I'm, I'm still improving. And I haven't even plateaued off yet, so I'm going to continue on um, with, with my hyperbarics. I will always stay on the omega-3s and, and the antioxidants um, and, and the green tea thing. Um, but my, my big focus now is, is I'm really trying to work on the sleep thing. Um, uh, that is, is, is my big focus. It's just like when we played, you know, we had a game plan. Uh, we weren't worried about getting down to the 10 yard line if we had 70 yards to go there. You know, for me, it's, it's, a, it's four yards in a cloud of dust. I'm just trying to keep my head down and I'm working my way to where I want to get back um, which is uh, another side effect that we have from this, from all the inflammation in our brain, is anger management issues, okay? And I know a lot of us can relate to this. The first one that takes the, the, the beating are our wives and families. The people that you don't want to beat on. They take the brunt of, of what we've, we've dealt with over the years. And again, you add a little alcohol or drugs in there, and you're beating the hell out of the people that you love the most. So again, if I could leave you guys with anything, it, it's the drinking, the drugs, get into hyperbarics, change the diet, it's not a big thing, the fish oils, all those together, the antioxidants, all those together, each one adds a little bit to your recovery. And I wanna thank Kirsten and, and Dr. Amon's clinic, um, if I can, if you guys can get down there, I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna jump back a little bit. Now, I was forced to sue the 40 Hours for Workers Comp back to, in 82, my second, third brain surgeries, they refused to pay for it. So I won my case in 86. Every time I go down there, the 40 Hours are paying for it. My, my hyperbaric oxygen treatments, workers comp, they're paying for it. My supplements, everything I do pertaining to my, my head injuries and my, and my knee surgeries, these are industry caused injuries. And if you have a work comp claim, they're covered. Right now, this is the only medical coverage I have. My brain blows out, I'm good. If my knee blows out, I'm good. Anything else, you know, I'm SOL. So uh, look into the work comp claims too. I know Ron touched on, or, you know, Ron, Ron's the man to talk to. There's some changes in California. Um, so again, I want to thank Kristen, uh, Dr. Amon's clinic. Uh, I'm on my way back. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, I've got some, some work to do, uh, repairing some damages I did to my body and to my relationships, but uh, things are looking good. I'm, I'm very enthused about everything that's happening. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Willemar and George. It's been good working with everybody here, and of course, this is the second year I'm here. Since we've been talking about supplements, one of the things I just want to mention in passing is one of the things I told you last year, we were talking about coping mechanisms. Uh, turns out that when you concentrate, you burn B1 in your brain. And so when you go to do something where you have to concentrate, if you take B1 ahead of time, you actually increase your ability to concentrate. And I used to give my grad students this information, before you take a test, guys, go, guys and gals, go take your B1, you won't have a bruised brain afterwards. I mean, I know Dr. Willemeyer knows that when she took the GRE, you walk out of taking those intensive tests, the SATs and all those, your brain feels bruised afterwards. Well, that gets rid of the bruised feeling in the brain in 15 minutes, so it's really kind of cool. You don't have to worry about that. I've actually passed that around at board meetings, a bottle, everybody takes some, and I've had the comment afterwards, gee, I was able to concentrate a whole lot better in this pre presentation than, than we have in the past. So. I well, appreciate very much the relationship that we have built with the Amen Clinic uh, over the years here. Uh, Dr. Harch's new book, The Oxygen Revolution, that some guy with a name Dr. Duncan wrote the forward to, uh, has an endorsement in it by Dr. Amen here. The Journal of Neurotrauma, which we just published in November, uh, Dr. Amen is also on this. And I, I know several of your other team members are on here because you did all the spec brain imaging. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a we whole. We analyzed your brain. Yes, yeah. you analyzed our brains. It was great. And the key was that spec brain imaging was done. They were able to do excellent analysis because of that whole library of 70,000 brains. I've, I've attended several of their conferences now, and it's amazing what we know. And one of the keys is the synergy, because we're actually not trying to prove hyperbarics works for brain injury. What we're actually trying to do is use this synergy to develop a protocol for maximum recovery of injured people. That's what we want. We want people to have the fullest lives possible because they're more productive that way. And I'll, co I'll cover some of those statistics here in my presentation. So we're after practical hyperbrakes. Now, we've, we've, we get the, the words, football is dangerous. I remember the, the Toyota commercial where the mother is worried about her kid playing football, but maybe Toyota is designing a better helmet for them. I noticed that it only ran once. <clears throat> But we might have to do away with football, a statement from a U.S. Congress member on the floor of the House of Representatives. And I was looking at that, and one of the things, I worked for Congress for 10 years. It was kind of weird. They put an economist in charge of health care, which I always thought was kind of funny. My congressman told me the first day he hired me, I'm putting you in charge of health care. You're one of 32 people in the United States Congress that control all the health care spending in the United States. Your job while you work for me, which I did for 10 years, is to make the U.S. healthcare system more effective, more efficient, and less expensive. So I had specific mission to do what we're doing today. And so my 10 years I spent doing the kind of, this is a culmination now of 20 years of doing this kind of work. I, I found hyperbarics 12 years ago when my youngest son uh, had been injured two years before serving as a Navy corpsman in the Marines, or mer serving the Marines as a Navy corpsman. Uh, injured in a training accident, fell and hit the back of his head on a rock. Um, doesn't get much simpler than that. And yet, no long-term, short-term memory, migraine, headaches, photophobia, couldn't sleep, unable to be employed. Um, 23, dad, I'm never gonna have a girl. I'm never gonna get married. I'm never gonna have kids. My life is over and I'm 23. One week later, I discovered hyperbarics. Took my son down there. Two months later, he's gainfully employed after 40, just 40 treatments, half the protocol. Two months later, he's gainfully employed. Nine months later, he's married. Nine months later, he has a sixth grandchild, right? That's a win for everybody out there that you know, knows about how great grandchildren are. And today, 12 years later, wife, four children, living in the burbs, teaching fifth grade. Now that's a life. He's got his life back, okay? So I tell Dr. Harch, Dr. Harch, you got my daughter-in-law pregnant, <laughs> right? I wouldn't even have a daughter-in-law if it weren't for Dr. Harch. So we might have to do away with football, 
Next slide, please. But it turns out many sports are prone to head injury. Do we do, we, we do it with soccer? Guess what? Dr. Nakas, that does QEGs, found out when they did all the scans that if they take a soccer ball wrong on the head, you got a concussion. You got some kid throwing up on the sidelines, guess what he's got or she's got? They've got a concussion because they took the ball wrong. Cheerleading. CDC lists that as the number one most dangerous thing for girls to do as sport. Snowboarding. You imagine a snowboarder having a, I mean, we can't ever imagine us having a concussion, right? Skiing, we had two congressmen ski and die. Rugby, horse sports, prize fighting, rodeo, all of these kinds of things. So do we ban all this stuff? I mean, what a guy's gonna do, right? I mean, I, I, I did this presentation for the National Foundation for Women Legislators, and my, my talk, the, the title of my talk was How Do We Reduce Entitlement Costs by Re Biologically Repairing Brain Injury? I said, ladies, what is the most expensive education in your the medical school? I said, no, it's not. It's remedial education. And they said, well, they should have learned it the first time. And then I said, with what? brain. Ladies, how many of you out there had sons? How many of us were lucky to live to be 21? And then they got it. Just do all this strange stuff, testify, which is why you have young football players and young men and, and go to war. Next slide. So one of the big areas we began working with almost immediately is our brain injured veterans. Now this is Brian Schieffer. He is an Air Force Special Forces guy. Takes five million dollars to train him. He is an athlete that after he runs to the top of the mountain, he has to shoot people. So it's not just run to the top of the mountain. Brian was injured in a rollover of his Humvee in a training exercise at Fort Irwin, not terribly far from here. Wound up paralyzed. We treated him for his brain injury, and he is the simple reason that all the rest of the, his special forces friends went back to duty, and they're all back to work. We can't use some guy on, as a poster veteran who's on active duty, can we? Right? So he, he came to us through the whole special forces community being treated out at uh, Eddie's Ants and other places. Colonel Wright joined us. Uh, his son is a very famous Marine who lost both of his hands from an IED hit in, in, in the Battle of Fallujah. So Brian joins many veterans and he is our poster vet and you see this brochure back here in the back. Now the, the way this works and we're going to have one of these now for athlete George Visker. George and I talked about this last night. George is going to be on the first from from the, his team breaks will be here and when people send nations to the zip code so people in Southern California, for example, that donate, those funds will go to treat people. And this is all focused on treatment. We're not out here raising money for cancer so someday we can find a cure, are we? We have practical treatments now for brain injured people. The key is, as you'll see as we go along, that as we do treatments on people and we track the results, we can then drive this into public policy so it is a standard way workers' comp pays. It's standard treatment that they pay for instead of what they're doing. So that's how the, the program works. I committed to you, for example, we will do that, is by get real treatment and in partnership with AMEN, we believe in paying for diagnostics. We believe in paying for these synergistic things like QEEG and the biofeedback together that really create a way in real time that they can help people start to control their own brain function and stimulate the brain in new ways for recovery. So you can see that, that this, this guy is $5 million to train. So it's $24,000 to rebuild his brain. Is that worth it to the government? I mean, it takes $20,000 to recruit a new person in the service. So if you spend $24,000 and put a guy who's worth $5 million back to duty, was that worth it? Yeah, next slide. So this is a Marine from the Battle of Fallujah. And do you happen to recognize the scan, Dr. Willemar? Oh, is that his, his wife? 
No, this, well, we won't talk about who it is, but his wife looks a lot like you, actually. <laughs> uh, this guy was in the Battle of Fallujah, and it looks like somebody took a ball peen hammering. It's a whole lot of little bitches. He was never knocked out. We had one guy who was completely knocked out. He, he decided that, that three flashbangs were better than one. I mean, that's what you'd always decide, right? Three, three hand grenades are better than one. So he throws three flashbangs in the door closet. So he wakes up with a closet on. I never had the, this guy never had that happen. He said, look, this was just the RPGs going off. I was four months fighting the Battle of Fallujah. And it just took, looks like somebody just dinged his brain. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> now, here's a football player's brain. Anybody recognize the football player? He's sitting here on the stand with us, actually. And his brain looks very similar, doesn't it? It's a whole lot of little dings. And we saw the, the, the scans that we were shown today. It's a lot of dings. The average, we are told, is that uh, the average player has 200 concussions before he starts playing pro ball with the NFL. 200 concussions. Now, that means a couple of things. First of all, that indicates a tremendous biological brain reserve capacity in these professional athletes. That's why you're the top 1%. You actually have genius level reserve capacity, okay? And as you saw, one of the things that, that you, you stay in focus is your spatial memory and, and, and your, your coordination uh, and reaction time. So this is genius level reserve capacity. And what we see when people come back is that same kind of capacity. So the oxygen revolution actually discusses that in, in the book. And that, you'll see that on the slideshow. Next slide, please. So it turns out all of these situations can lead to untreated brain insults, falls, motor vehicle accidents, victims of crime, domestic violence. It turns out the single most expensive public health crisis in America, the thing that costs the most in state, federal, and local budgets is untreated brain injury. So if we actually start actively repairing brains, just like Dr. Willemeyer's talked about today, we will massively reduce the health care, the, the budget crisis that's in the state of California and the federal government and every place else. That one single thing is the most important. See, it turns out that a nine mile per hour motor vehicle collision leaves a residual brain injury. That's UCLA research. Nine miles per hour. So when I'm talking to the police officer, they say, well, my gosh, what we need to do on workers' comp is we don't want to, hey, they might shoot somebody, they shouldn't. How much does it cost if in that split instant second, a police officer shoots somebody he shouldn't. Gee, it would have been cheaper to send him for hyperbaric treatment, wouldn't it? We don't want that brain injury to mature. We want to treat him quickly, and so that's part we've developed that we're working on with the police officer standards and training in California and elsewhere. Next slide. So results of untreated brain injuries, 50 percent of income. How's that for attorneys in here? This is, these are good statistics. 45% of people who have early retirement, early onset dementia, homelessness, substance abuse, a single untreated veteran right now is costing 60,000 per year in society from healthcare costs, incarceration, et cetera. Incarceration, which George talked to, anger issues, including road rage. The courier that brought the chamber last night told me that was his issue, and he's a courier. Sleep disorders, depression, compulsive gambling, dysfunctional family life, and suicide. Next slide. Recovery does not mean healed without residual effect of the injury. In fact, I have here in my hand something that the US Department of Defense spent millions of dollars on, this little booklet. And what it says is, oh, 90% of everybody has a brain injury, just recovers, you'll be fine, you'll be back to normal, don't worry about it. That's what it says. They take that from the sports literature world. And where did the sports literature world get it from? Well, all the NFL uh, per, you know, studies that kept saying, brain injuries are no big deal, don't worry about it, just it's going to be OK. 90% of everybody recovers, and don't worry about it. That's what, that's what all the literature says. OK? Well, it turns out, in this book, what it says is, after you have a brain injury, just don't use your brain. <laughs> now, <laughs> Dr. Walmart. If you had a patient come in 
who had a compound fracture on the leg, and every time they stepped on their leg, blood squirted out, would you just counsel them to stay off of it? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's a dumb idea, right? right? Okay, so we have people with compound fractures of the brain walking around in society, and the army is telling them to stay off their brain. Now, what's more practical? Repairing the brain or letting people walk around with blood squirting out? Here's the answer as to why this is without effect. Uh, down there at the bottom, it says, in conclusion, the results of this study, which was a high altitude study done in New Zealand Air Force in 1980, in two groups, people who'd had prior concussions who were in college with doing fine in class. And they took other people who'd never had a concussion who were having the same grades in school. And they took one, they took both groups then to a, they made them hypoxic, they took them to eight. Their scores, if they'd had a prior brain injury, go to crap. Why? They don't have as much reserve capacity. You steadily lose that capacity each one of these days. And it says here that the, that's very clearly that these are residual injuries and each one of them are cumulative. So that's one of the reasons that we, we focused on doing two things. Number one, resetting the brain. And number two, making sure that fresh concussions are treated immediately. Next slide. And here's why acute treatment matters. This is from hyperbaric oxygen. This is Dr. Van Meter's work. It's actually quite a humorous story. A guy is sucked into a dredge and he is dead for 20 minutes. He looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger on Mars and he, he was dead and he was their friend and they had an emergency diving chamber in the Mississippi River. And so George, uh, to, to Sam, he says, hey, I can't give George back to Sally looking like this. Let's stick him in the chamber and see if he can recompress his face so at least she can see him again. I mean, it's a logical thing for bent people to do because they have residual brain injury from all the diving they do too. Not necessarily great. So they stuck him back in the chamber, the spheres, which is what a diving chamber goes to, dredge that made his face like this. So one guy says, I'm gonna get in the chamber just so we can tell Sally we did everything. The guy's on the outside, and he's, he's flipping all the switches on the, on the thing, and he hits the wrong switch, and he fills the chamber with pure 100% O2 at six atmospheres. Now, just so everybody knows, 100% atmosphere, six atmospheres, will make everyone in here, and you just seize, and that's where you are. So, <clears throat> Dr. Van Meter says the call came in like this. Dr. Van Meter, I don't know what to do anymore. My, my best friend who was dead, well, he's, his eyes are blinking and he's breathing and my other friend is seized and, and, and he, I don't know what to do anymore. Can you help? So <laughs> he flies down and rescues the rescue diver who had seized, who didn't have a residual problem from seizing because it's an induced seizure. It doesn't leave, relieve a residual effect, fortunately. And he then put the barge or put the, uh, the chamber on a barge and they floated down to the New Orleans and, and he treated the guy and the guy still looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger on Mars. He said he had no eyes, he had no ears, he had no, had no nose, mouth, it was all just kind of this big. And he says, I kept treating him and pretty soon we got the edema down where it was supposed to be, he looked normal again. He had been dead, drowned for 20 minutes when they found him. And everybody's going, well that's weird. That can't be. Somebody who's dead for 20 minutes, you just can't bring them back to life. Everybody knows that if your heart stops longer than 20 minutes, for, 12 minutes, forget it. You're not getting that person back. So what was wrong? Well, it must have been the hyperbaric oxygen at six atmospheres. So Dr. Van Meter does the normal appropriate thing. He gets a bunch of guinea pigs. He kills them. He lays, lays, car, stop, causes cardiac arrest, sets them on the table, waits for 20 minutes, brings them back to life. Following the same product, accidentally discovered by a couple of divers trying to fix their friend who had drowned, okay? And this now is the follow-up study on pigs. And what it shows, it talks about oxygen debt. In other words, if, if, a, if a cell is deprived of oxygen, it goes into a state of dormancy first to protect itself, and then it dies, okay? So it goes into a hypoxic dormant state to reduce its oxygen consumption trying to save itself. And it takes 71 minutes to do nothing but have people breathe 
O2 by my nose, 71 minutes to correct that in the cells. It takes 12 minutes at the pressure that chamber in the back goes to, two atmospheres. It takes 5.2 minutes to restore brain cellular function when they run the high pressure four to six atmosphere protocol for 20 minutes. In that process, what they discovered was they literally, and this is in the article, they literally are able to stop blood clotting, right? I mean, it arrests blood clotting. It, it restarts all the stun cellular metabolism. And this guy today, you know what he's doing? Anyway, this was discovered 25 years ago. He is making custom cat fine motor scroll where he's not sitting in a wheelchair going like this. He is animated running a business successfully. For some reason, he stopped diving, you know. I mean. <laughs> I guess you figure you get one of those. So you can see that acute ear attorneys, if somebody has a plea, can you sue for that? Yeah, you can sue. You can make them put them in the chamber. We have a case of two people with carbon monoxide poisoning, husband and wife, 21. Hus husband went one hospital, wife went another hospital. The wife was treated with hyperbaric oxygen. She went home normal the next day. Husband went home in a wheelchair and is permanently disabled because they refused to treat him. Next slide. So this is the current list of treatments that are being by DOD, VA, and for brain injury. They give you the whole list of drugs. There's all the the, the uh, anti-anxiety drugs, the, the whole red ones there, those are all the antidepressants. They are red, they, they carry a black label warning by the FDA for, for suicidality in those under 25. And we wonder why we're losing 20 veterans a day to suicide. 20 per day, that is more than we lose in combat. That is now more than we lost in combat. We've had that many suicides. And it's being driven by giving these drugs off-label. I had somebody from, they said, well, you want to treat people off-label? I'm going, well, you're already treating people off-label. And my treatment, oxygen, doesn't carry a black label warning by the FDA to cause suicide in people. But our, well, yeah, but we're doing ours. I go, yeah, I know you are. And we find out that, uh, They've now found out the antidepressants don't work. We're spending millions of dollars on them, and they, are, they work less than a placebo. And the antipsychotics, they've spent $717 million in the VA on that drug that is less, than, less effective than placebo. So it's kind of like, OK, if we'd had $717 million to treat everybody with hyperbarics, we could have treated 219,000 men and women and restored them to life, effective life. You could have, what, 717 million, your Amen clinics would probably be expanding, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Now, this is a non healing wound in the foot. You can see this. We can take pictures of this. This guy was going to have his foot cut off the next day. I, I helped, uh, Dr. Harch and I got diabetic foot wound approved by Medicare in 2003 so we could stop chopping off people's feet. It cost $38,400 to chop off a foot and $16,000 to save it. So, your choice is, gentlemen, ladies, Breathe, watch TV, or have your foot chopped off. Which would you prefer? Works the same way with brain injury. Do you want to, leave, do you want to breathe and watch TV and, and repair your brain or just live with it like it is? Because I'm doing right. We all know that we're doing OK, because that's what we were taught to say, right? Back when, the, when your helmet was the tip of your spear. Next slide. So. The solution is to biologically repair an injury to the brain. Now, this is a marine machine gunner, six IEDs, one RPG hit, two tours in Iraq. You can see he's had extensive damage in the frontal lobe. He has a whole set of damage in the interior of his brain where PTSD and, and anxiety are all located. And you can see his temporal lobes. He's lost a lot of long-term, short-term memory and has emotional issues, as Dr. Wellmeyer already stated, okay? Next slide. This is the cross section of his brain. So look what happens on the inside of his brain. And the, the important part of this slide, uh, we, had a, we have a, a, radio, radio, a neuroradiologist up in North Dakota who did this slide. And we found that we actually wound up with a 50% increase in brain metabolism. What happens, just so happens that when somebody has a traumatic brain injury, they have a 50% loss of brain metabolism. 
And so now we've shown that the hyperbarics gives you a 50% increase. Does, does that correlate, lawyers? Does that kind of cross-correlate? You have a damage 50% reduction and a treatment's 50% increase, right? And by the way, I then get told, well, these images are controversial. And well, what's controversial about them? You don't like the result? Because it's radioactive salt. It does not have a political agenda, does it? I've never, I've never met a piece of radioactive salt that said, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I, I hate brain injury, I like brain injury. Yeah, it's just radioactive salt. It just does what it does. Next slide. So the solution, it's just oxygen. And I get people say, well, what's your mechanism of action? What kind of proof do you have that oxygen isn't a placebo? Well, in order for something to be a placebo, it has to have no physiological effect. It has to have the potential of being inert. So, oxygen is used in 5,769 cellular processes counted to date. Can it be a placebo? No, it can't be a placebo. Well, then we find out that hyperbaric oxygen activates 8,101 genes. If something activated one gene, would it be a placebo? No. So we've acted. These genes down, which Dr. Wilmeyer has already talked about today, upregulate growth and repair processes, and normal baric oxygen doesn't. So it's given you the nose cannula is not hyperbaric oxygen. It, the pressure sensors in the cells exist and they work. So we, we all can agree a lack of oxygen is bad, right? I think everybody in the room is addicted to oxygen, are we not? Kinda. We know how it works. It actively stops swelling, which is called, also called reperfusion injury. It restarts stem cellular metabolism. It regrows blood vessels and activates stem cells eight times normal. And in fact, no wound heals without oxygen. So all of a sudden, when you saturate with seven to 12 times normal breathing oxygen, you heal wounds that never have healed. Wounds heal 50% faster with less scar tissue. Bones heal 30% faster and 30% stronger. And the placebo effect can be completely ruled out. So you don't have to do a randomized control trial to show that this works. Now, the FDA still wants us to, because that's because we went to the drug side. But that's being done now. Uh, we get part of the money for that already. Next slide. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. I, I don't have my clock up here, so I don't know what time it is, and there wasn't one here, so. Okay. That's great. So th this is a good place to stop anyway. So this is where we are on the science. We have a really good handle on that science, and now, as you see in the next slides, we're going to talk about how we have moved this as an organization, united clinics across the nation into a network that can rapidly provide treatment to people in their local areas. And that's a key. So even they can come to the Amen Clinic, get all worked up, even get a few treatments, go back home to Solvang or, or Minnesota or wherever, and then get treatments locally, and then keep coming back for evaluation. And it works really well that way. So appreciate your time, and we'll continue this this afternoon. supplements, restful sleep, which uh, has a lot of melatonin in, natural, um, uh, and uh, on top of that I take an additional four melatonin every night before I go to bed, um, and sometimes when I'm a few hours later when I wake up, I, I'll lay there and I'll take a couple more even. I don't think you can OD on them, can you? Yeah, 
No, not necessarily. Take, as long as you're sleeping, George. Right. Uh, I believe they're water. They're water soluble. So if you have too much, you'll get rid of them. So uh, basically, um, my spec, uh, my spec scans and and everything, and actually my microcognitive memory tests. Uh, I don't know what was. Do you know what my last score was when I was down there just two weeks ago? I haven't seen Your that yet. Score? Yeah. Um, actually, your memory score had improved. I want to say, was it in the 60s? It was 64 the oh, last time. 60th. Uh, so it was, uh, when I started, I, I believe I, I, I had scored a, a 56 before I started all my treatments. Um, I went back down. One of the things they got me on, business relationships, you name it. So if I could give you guys any, the, probably the first thing I would tell you is either quit drinking or cut back. And then the diet, too. I think a lot of the things that I was doing 20, 30 years ago have helped me maintain despite what I've been through. Um, and um, uh, another little, little, you know, I, I, th those of you that have seen me this weekend, I, I live out of these. You know, I have 20, 30 years of these. I'll have 20 pages a day. I write down the time when someone's, I'm speaking to someone, what we're talking about. And I've learned over the years, every few days, I'll read back the prior week or two. So that means I'll have read what I did four days ago. Maybe I'll end up reading about it three times. Now, I may not remember meeting with the governor a week and a half ago, but I know I did because I've read it four times now. And just the repetitive, it's just like in practice. You know, we practice the same plays over and over and over, the same moves over and over. So you didn't have to think about them. And, and that's, I've kind of just conditioned myself into a number of different coping mechanisms. Um, uh, I'll associate to. My first brain surgery was September of 81. Between then and four months after we won the Super Bowl, January of 82, rested three times. I have absolutely no memory how I got there. Just throwing chairs through windows, punching people out, um, totally out of character. Well, that that May May of '82, my shunt failed. I had two more brain surgeries ten hours apart with a new surgeon, and we told him about my issues with the alcohol. And they had me do a uh, they did a, an EEG on me, which measures uh, brain waves. But they had me drink two two beers prior to that, and just from two beers, and I was totally fine functioning. I had um, abnormal brain waves. They were spiking all over. So basically, I have um, brain seizures from alcohol. And um, I quit drinking in 82. They said, you can't drink anymore. So I think we can all appreciate the fact that we know many, many people that are great guys until you put a couple of drinks in them, and they're totally different people. That causes a hell of a lot of problems with our marriages, the green tea thing. Another one that, that I got on two years ago um, for the antioxidants, um, not knowing how well that, that they were going to start pushing that. So I kind of lucked out. A lot of the things I started on several years ago are now really coming out more and more in the public. So antioxidants, when we're playing, especially, and I'm going to just kind of focus on the brain, but our entire bodies, we're beating the hell out of it. Okay, with the brain, every time you're hitting, your brain's sloshing around, you're stretching those neurons. Well, they get inflamed, just like your muscles get inflamed when, when you're sore after playing. Well, those inflamed cells, if you don't do something to them, they will start dying sooner th than a normal human. And I always talk about there's football players and there's normal human beings. So normal human beings, their brains don't slosh around, and most of those will start showing signs of dementia in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, two years ago, when I started all these treatments, I was on four different dementia medicines at once, on top of grand mal seizure meds, just to try to keep functioning in, in my, one was the hyperbaric oxygen treatments, and then the omega-3s. Um, and uh, what's funny is, I had always taken omegas years ago. Uh, one, they'll reduce cholesterol, and I was a very thin kid growing up, and I always had to really, really work to keep my weight up. And I was 275 when I was playing, and, but I would eat a dozen, dozen half eggs a day, 
And when I got done, I thought, good God, my arteries are probably going to explode. So um, one, of the, one of the lucky things for me, I think, is despite what I've been through over the years, is, is the first year I got out, I, I dumped about 45 pounds, 50 pounds. And I've kept my weight about there. Um, with the diet, this is before I really knew a lot of the stuff, but I was lucky. I changed my diet totally. Um, I went from eating all the eggs and, and raw red meat, uh, fish and chicken, uh, lots of vegetables, not even knowing they're full of antioxidants and things. Um, to this day, I still, I still, uh, and I eat like a pig, but I, but what I eat, I think, is a little better for me. Um, I touched on the, the sleep apnea test. That's the big thing I need to work on. Um, another issue, and this is one I think we can all.